I'm gonna review a good game for once. Yeah, now don't worry, I'll go back to torture myself with shitty ones, but for now, let's do something awesome. Super Mario Bros. 3 is often considered to be the greatest game on the NES, and for good reasons. It took everything that made the first Mario great and multiplied it several times over, adding new intricate levels of gameplay and challenges. Whether it's the top loader or that classic gray box, the Nintendo Entertainment System was at the height of its popularity when this masterpiece came along to push it over the top and make an everlasting impression, the defining moment of our childhood pastime. During the final years of the 8-bit era, many other games came along like Mick Kids and Tiny Toon Adventures which tried to emulate its gameplay, its power-up system, and overall design. It was one of the first games I remember to have a strategy guide. There was also a Super Mario Bros. 3 cartoon series, even though there was no 2. That's the power that this game had. All you gotta do is say Mario 3 and anyone will go, oh yeah. Now, all the hype began before the game was even released. Most of us first heard about Mario 3 in the 1989 movie, The Wizard. An innocent little family flick, but essentially a theatrical Nintendo commercial in disguise as a feature film. The plot involves a kid named Jimmy suffering from a mental disorder after his sister died. They put him in an institution, his brother breaks him out, and they run away. On top of that, Jimmy's hell-bent on going to California. California? California! 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 All just because he wants to leave photographs of his sister inside Dinny the Dinosaur, one of two dinosaur statues previously featured in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Along the way, they meet some girl who's also a runaway, and they find out that Jimmy kicks ass at Nintendo games, so they enter a video game tournament called Video Armageddon. Throughout the course of all this, they're being chased by some asshole who finds lost kids for money. Meanwhile, he's competing with the father and older brother who are trying to find him first. So, yeah, that's all great, but do you think any nine-year-old kid gave two fucking shits about the plot of this movie? I know I didn't. I saw it in the theater opening day, and here's a perfect reenactment, all for you. What the hell is this shit? I don't care what these people are talking about. Oh, look back there. What game is this? Who the hell are you? Go back to the freaking Wonder Years, you piece of shit! Oh, what game's that? Oh, you hear it? That's Zelda 2! Oh, what games are they playing? Turn it around! Come on, I wanna see the damn games! That's what it was like. You'd see a few moments of a game, you'd get excited, and then it's back to the story. I got the scroll weapon, and I almost beat Mega Turtle at the end of level three. While some game lingo was thrown in, the audience, the kids watching the movie, were the experts and would notice anything that was wrong. When Jimmy's playing Double Dragon, he starts mashing buttons before the game even begins. Then after his brother pulls him away, only to turn back, he says, 50,000? You got 50,000 on Double Dragon? 50,000? How could you get 50,000 points in less than a minute? And why such a random number? Also note that it's not the arcade version of Double Dragon. It's the Nintendo version, which means that he's playing it on the Play Choice 10, an arcade clone of games that were also on the NES. Obviously an endorsement from Nintendo. But the tabletop one in the diner, I've never seen that. Then there's the Nintendo Power Tip line. That's right, people sitting around ready to help you with any game problem you have. 
Simon's Quest. Just call that 900 number and rack your parents' phone bill up the ass. Enter Lucas, the other villain, the opposing game expert of the film. Pick any game you want. I'm good at all of them. I have 97 of them. You know all 97 of them? Today, there's about 800 Nintendo games, but for the time being, let's say, okay, Lucas is the master at Nintendo because he has all 97 games. You want to be as badass as him, right? Well, you better get your parents to take out a loan and get you every Nintendo game. And of course, the biggest advertisement ever in a movie, the Power Glove. He proves his radicalness by playing Rad Racer. Rock music comes on, which doesn't belong from the game. You can chop out 20 seconds of this, repackage it, and air it on TV, and there you go. It's a commercial for the Power Glove. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. The Wizard was a rare instance in product placement when the prime moviegoers were interested in the product rather than the movie itself. Again, much like in Pee Wee, it ends with a big chase through a movie studio, this time the Universal backlot, from the monster movie sets to where King Kong attacks the trolley. Universal Theme Park was just about to open in Florida that following year. Another endorsement? Well, it's a Universal film, so of course. The highlight is the game tournament, where the three finalists, Jimmy, Lucas, and some geeky bitch that nobody cares about, all compete in a game that nobody had even played yet. With the craziest host ever and the most epic introduction to anything in existence on the planet, this is when, for the first time, we set our eyes on Super Mario Bros. 3. Not only did it blow our minds to get a preview of this game on the big screen, but it also gave us a big tip. Who the fuck would know the first time playing to fly up over the ceiling and get the magic flute, and then to use it as a warp to get to World 4? After seeing the wizard, we sure did. Rather than it being a simple test of who makes it the farthest, they had some weird scoring system with knights running. How exactly do they keep score? But who cares? This movie may be a mess, but it lives on in our hearts with a sentimental quality. Just the fact that they actually have wizard reunions is a testament to that. But now, let's talk about Mario 3. This is going to be short because there's not much you can say that already hasn't been said a million times, but I'll put it blunt and simple. This game kicks your ass till diarrhea comes out your dick. The only thing better than playing this game would be to have a magic leprechaun come and bring you beer. There's eight worlds, each with a different theme. Desert, snow, sky, and my favorite is the one where everything's giant. Slide through a bunch of bad guys, oh, that's so much fun. The two-player game has a perfect balance. It's where you can either work together to complete the game or just compete for items and race each other to the end. Or you could die deliberately so that the other player will have to play the hard levels. There's card games, puzzle games, and even a bonus stage where you can play the original Mario Bros. Arcade. Again, this offers many possibilities to be an asshole toward the other player. But about the power-ups? You also have a frog suit that swims a lot easier, you got a hammer suit which throws hammers, and a tanuki suit that turns into a statue. I don't know what that's about. I mean, I know you use it to protect yourself from enemies, but man, what kind of crack were they smoking? But the really cool thing is that you can save these power-ups and use them whenever you need them. Like before the start of the level, you might think, eh, it's time to break out the frog suit. The enemies in the game are out of control. You got these Goombas hopping around in wind-up boots. Then you got an angry son, Big Bertha, and nuclear waffles. Not to mention, you gotta fight all the Koopa kids and beat Bowser at the end. Alright, going through the pipes. Oh, wait. Oh. Bullshit! What a bunch of fucking bullshit! Come on, you piece of shit! Come on, move your ass! Hey, how do I get this flower right here? I don't know, I'm just gonna try to... Uh, come on! Yeah, alright. This game's tricky-dicky. It's pretty damn hard, too. Then there's this part where the only way to reach the goal is to fly in the air while holding a Koopa shell and break all the blocks. Who would even think to go up there? Especially when you get to the last world, it can get real challenging. This part doesn't fuck around. It's like, you got to the end, you dare to play, welcome to hell. That's what it looks like. All this fire and skulls, it looks like hell. There's sort of like a heart shape around it. Yeah, a heart around hell. Does that mean that this game loves hell? This game worships the devil. Oh my god, of course it does. Why is there so many inverted crosses? What's the H stand for? Hell? How about the part with the tarot cards? The N, Necronomicon? The P must be possession. 
Or maybe Pentagram. Well, of course, the Pentagram makes an appearance everywhere. It's no doubt that the seven sons of Bowser represent the seven deadly sins. You kneel before Satan on the block, and after six seconds, you fall through. There's six arrows on the possession meter, and to reach the goal, you go in the sixth door. That's 666. Everywhere you look, it's the number of the beast. In The Wizard, the game's introduction is basically the gates of hell opening. I'm up here, my little beauties. Secret! 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 Yeah, video Armageddon. The devil watches you through the whole game. The clouds have eyes, the hills have eyes. <laughs> yeah, literally, the hills have eyes. Thanks heaven. And we know that there's no need to thank heaven unless there's the presence of hell. There's eight worlds. In the eighth world, there's five spaces you can stand on where giant hands drag you down to your doom. There's 12 tanks you gotta jump on before the goal. And it takes me 12 jumps to get Bowser to fall down the hole. The eighth letter of the alphabet is H, five equals E, 12 equals L. What's that spell? Hell! And what's it sound like when you play the game backwards? This game's a product of the fucking devil. And none of the other Mario games are like that, so I don't know why it's only this one, but... In conclusion, all I can say is that, other than being the total epitome of evil, Super Mario Bros. 3, it's a good game. So good it's a sin. Your mother. Oh my. God, it's a possessed NES. Your mother sucks cocks in hell. The fuck did you just say? I said, your mother sucks cocks in hell. Oh! Oh. Go back to hell, you evil motherfucker! Shove it up your ass, you motherfucking cocksucker! Power of Christ compels you! What an excellent fucking day for an exorcism. Power of Christ compels uh, you! Uh, Power of Christ compels you! Yeah, uh, fuck your mother. Power of Super Mega Death Christ compels you! Fuckers! Fuckers! Ouch, you my back wasn't bad enough. Yeah, it's Super Mega Death Christ 2000 BC version 4.0 beta, bitch! Fuckers! Fuckers!
Oh. All this shit. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs>